The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Now, before we get to this week's movie, I would like to change the mood a bit and get serious, if I may, by bringing everyone's attention to a vanishing vanishing culture that desperately needs your help. Again, Bunny, this would be a perfect spot for you to add some sad music in post. Again, you don't have to. You do not have to. I don't want to pressure you. I don't want to tell you how to do your job. But if you would like to add some sad, copyright-free music to the background here, then that would be the perfect time. <clears throat> Did you know that right now there is a repressed minority that is in danger of vanishing from existence unless you help them? I am, of course, talking about vampires. Yes, these poor, unfortunate people are persecuted, maligned, and killed with stakes through the heart, and all for the crime of being different. Yes. And killing people and drinking their blood. But they're but the people that they kill are mostly all bad. They're real bad owners. Yes. These poor creatures are hunted and despised and even some third thing. And unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. That's a classic line. Who said that? Dr. Seuss did. I knew Dr. Seuss. I knew Dr. Seuss back when he was pill-popping, coke-snorting, pre-med Seuss. Before he got his shit together. Look, the point is... We need help in saving the vampire community from total and complete extinction. You can do your part in helping these vanishing creatures of the night by making yourself aware. And the best way to become aware of the sad, downtrodden lives of modern vampires is by watching the absolutely true award-winning 2014 New Zealand documentary what we do in the shadows. Yes. Oh my God! How great is this movie, buddy? I I I absolutely love it. It's it's one of my favorite movies in a really long time. Love this movie. And and how and also, this is kind of a, a side comment here. How amazing is it too that we've done two straight weeks of actual good movies? That's weird. Yes, that is very weird. It's weird for us. Blazing Saddles and what we do in the shadows. Like what did we do it, to deserve? It makes a nice people. segue between those two movies, you know. The humor's not oh, yeah. exactly the same, but it's close. Yeah. Um and now now this film really does stand out. Not only because it is a wildly original film that is ridiculously easy to fall in love with, but I somehow, no idea how I did this, but I somehow managed to see this film with Natasha, Bella, and even Maxwell. That's rare as shit right there. Yes. That never happens. But this film somehow manages to be both gory as hell and in no way scary. No, no. It's, it's like in that perfect, it's like in that perfect sweet spot. Like mm -hmm. I remember as a kid, my parents taking me to go see Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. That scared the shit out of me. <laughs> that would scare me so much that I remember telling my parents like, uh, I need to go to the bathroom. And I would go to the bathroom, and not because I needed to go. It just scared the shit out of me, like pregnant snakes and monkey brains yeah. and pulling people's hearts out and people just dying. And I'm like, I need to go to the bathroom again. <laughs> really? But this is your fifth time. I drank a lot of soda. It's, and, and also, you don't care because it's my parents. They didn't, they didn't care. They didn't yeah. care how many times I went to the bathroom. But, um, oh my god, that movie scared the shit out of me, and that was PG. I recently saw a video on YouTube about the creation of PG-13. Oh, yes. And, um, and this was a big, big one of them. This and Gremlins. Yes. 
Yeah, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, Gremlins. Poltergeist was PG for shit's sake. Which is why I never really particularly cared for that movie. God, I, that was another movie I was taken to at a young age that <laughs> fucked me the hell up. I, you but, know, by the time by the time I had seen Poltergeist, I had already seen much, much worse. You know, I had already yeah. dove deep into the treasures of home video. Oh yeah. So that when I saw Poltergeist, it's like, yeah, nice story, well acted nothing much else here the effects kind of suck yeah <laughs> you know yeah but poltergeist is one of my legendary stories we were it was my birthday and we were going to go see bambi yeah but bambi was sold out so instead we went to poltergeist <laughs> which makes sense because those two movies go hand in hand yes when you think of I one think you every- think of the other yeah, I think everybody remembers the scene where uh, Bambi's mom is shot to death and then Bambi starts peeling his own face off. Yes. In the mirror. That's a classic Disney scene right there. It was so cute. Yeah, it was freaking adorable. But this film, what we do in the shadows is gory and people die and there's blood everywhere, but it's in no way frightening. It is in no way frightening. No, because because they 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 went as far with making it a vampire film while keeping it straight up funny right from the yeah. beginning. And I, I think it's really more that the one disarms the other. Yeah. You know, because you because you could have done a straight hammer esque vampire movie with those sets and those people, and it probably could be could have been very terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. But the jokes just don't stop. No. No. And I I like expect the the rarest thing is seeing this movie with Natasha cuz she uh can't sit down and watch a movie. Yeah. Nowadays she will sit down and watch a TV show for 5 hours, but a movie is too long. <laughs> that's, that's how society is now. I will sit down and binge watch a show for seven hours, but a movie that's just too long. I don't mm-hmm. want to watch that. Mm-hmm. I'll sit down and watch 12 episodes of Parks and Rec, but uh, this movie's like an hour and a half. That's so long. Half a freaking sentence. It's like this weird, it's I, like this weird time warp that everyone has. I, but I Natasha, think, I think we. <laughs> I think we have it because the very opposite is true. It's not that the movie is really too long. I know that's what we say. I do it too. The movie's too short. In about about an hour and a half to two hours, you're gonna have to make another decision. Yeah. Yeah. And we're and that's what we're not into anymore. Yeah. You know, now it's like let's watch the the whole season of Flash tonight. Yeah. Natasha and Bella are obsessed with the Netflix show Sense Eight. Sense Eight, yes, I. Yeah. It 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 just got canceled or something. Yeah, it just got canceled, and uh, so the fandom went nuts because Netflix is canceling shows. Not because they're bad, but because literally the CEO of Netflix is like, holy shit, guys, I was reading this book called uh, Running a Network for Dummies, and apparently we're supposed to be canceling shit? <laughs> oh my god, we should be canceling things if we want to be like taken seriously in junk. So, hey, uh, what's your show? Sense8, great, you're canceled. Yeah, that was, that was the Wachowski show, as far as I know. <laughs> And yeah. I had watched a few of them. Let's put it this way, okay? I may have even have watched the whole first season. And yeah. I, I don't recall. I remember vaguely about the plot, but it just, like, didn't grab me, and I gave it a shot. Well, Natasha wants to be gay. Yeah. Natasha is just in love with gay people and gay lifestyle. 
and she she wants to start a nonprofit to help gay people, and she just loves she's in love with gays. The way that I'm in love with bad movies, she is in love in that same way, but bad movies are gay people. Okay. She just loves gays. She's a big fan of gays. And so uh, it, it she she was like, what show are you? I'm like, what show are you watching? Oh, it's called Sense8, and it's amazing. It has the most diverse cast, and these people are lesbians, and this person is trans, and there's this one scene where this trans person and this 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 these two gay men and these lesbians, and I'm like, hold on a second, is this the Wachowski? So she's yeah. like, yes, how did you? Yes, it is, and I'm like, oh, okay. That's not surprising. She's like, why do you say that? And I'm like, well, nothing I can say to you because you'll get super offended. <laughs> but but there's nothing surprising about any of the things you're telling me. They made Bound. Yes. Yeah. But Natasha is being really good with Bella because her and Bella will be sitting on the couch and they'll be watching the show. And they'll be holding hands and getting really excited about all the characters. But Natasha, being a professional, she's like, oh, my God, there's a sexy. Bella, close your eyes. And she'll, like, put the blanket over her. And, and Natasha will fast forward through the sex scene. And, oh, you, oh, you muted during the sex scene. Okay. I'm going to get you some food, okay? Hold on. Jesus, baby. But, yeah. Yeah, no, Natasha's being really good with the extremely graphic sex scenes. So that's good. Good. Well, don't they, can't they all, like, share each other's memories and stuff? Because they all fuck, is that it? They share each other's lives, consciousness? Because they're all doing each other? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. They, they jump in and out of each other's bodies. Okay. Yeah. Do you want a frozen one? Yeah. I was coming out here to feed the baby and find out if you were talking shit about my show. I was not talking shit about your show. We were talking about the Wachowskis. Okay. And that explains why the character of uh, Nomi is written so well. Nomi's the, the, the trans female. Ah, gotcha. I, I, I yeah. just always thought it was Lana Wachowski. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what I thought the few episodes I saw. I was like, there we go. Okay. Yep. Makes sense. Now, the story of the making of this week's movie is interesting. Of course, in order to tell the story right of the making of what we do in the shadows, we have to go all the way back to New Zealand's premier folk comedy band, Flight of the Concords. Yes. Yes. I love and them so much. This movie also proves something very important and something that I have always uh, felt in my heart that more hair makes anybody better looking. Yes. Because Jermaine yeah. from Flight of the Concords yeah. Yeah. is yeah. an ugly, ugly motherfucker. He's a weird looking dude. He's he a is, weird looking he dude. He is just an ugly dude. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, but, but. As we learn in this movie, throw some long hair on you, maybe a stash, bit of a goatee. Yeah, not that bad. Yeah, not bad at all. Yeah. He, this movie he dirties up nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this movie proved to me that New Zealand is such a small nation that if you're like a stand-up comedian or a musician or an actor. You probably know every other stand-up comedian or musician or actor in the entire nation. That's how small New Zealand is. Because the woman who plays, what's her name, Jeannie? Yeah. 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 Um, She plays a UFO enthusiast in the New Zealand TV show Short Poppies. Which uh, was created by Reese Darby, who played the Flight of the Concords manager Murray in Flight of the Concords, and is also in this as the head of the werewolves. Yes. Basically, all of yeah, yeah, the Alpha, the Alpha. Uh, even in Flight of the Concords, 
even in Flight of the Concords, I had him just picked for an alpha. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm the alpha. band meeting. <laughs> yeah. I basically saw Yes Man for for him. Yeah. He's amazing. Yes Man. Loved him <laughs> in that. So, no, Leggy Blonde, yes. but uh, And uh, Bowie, of course. Every, my whole family knows Bowie. Bowie. My favorite, though, recently, I switched between what's my favorite Fight of the Concord song and my favorite one right now is It Is the Distant Future, the year 2000. <laughs> what's my favorite right now? <laughs> so, Flight of the Concords, that's Brett oh. and Jermaine. They were both roommates at college. Mm-hmm. They both liked music. They played music together. Then they formed, while they were in college in New Zealand, they formed a five man comedy group called So You're a Man. <laughs> and it was Brett, Jermaine, some guy, some other guy, and. This movie's director, Taika Waititi. Okay. Boom. Everyone in New Zealand is connected. It's such a small freaking nation. Everybody knows everybody. So they were BFFs in college. Nice. Yeah. So then in 1998, Brett and Jermaine formed a bizarre comedy band called Flight of the Concords. On the side, though, Jermaine and Taika is yeah. what I'm going with for the rest of this. Formed a two man comedy group called the Humor Beasts. Okay. With a UN humor because we're in New Zealand and not a god and not God fear in US of A. So humor has a U in it. Yes. Um so yeah, Jermaine was in Flight of the Concords and he was in the Humor Beast because like Lego Batman, Jermaine likes to comedy around. <laughs> he likes to comedy with a bunch of different comedians. Yeah. He likes to keep his options open. And and speaking of God Fear in USA, it was just the 4th of July. Yes. And let me tell you about 4th of July in Oklahoma. Okay. okay. Number one, everyone has explosives. Mm-hmm. Not us, but we're technically not Oklahomans. Um, in Oklahoma, this is the thing that's amazing about Oklahoma. Uh, about Fourth of July in Oklahoma, you go to, go to like go to like Walmart or like a Target or something. In Oklahoma, during the Fourth of July, about sixty five percent of all men suddenly dress. Like WWF's Lex Luger. <laughs> They've got the American flag pants, the American flag jacket and jumpsuit and matching hat. Yeah. They all look like Lex Luger during that period in time when Hulk Hogan just left mm-hmm. and the WWF is like, shit, we need a Hulk Hogan. Here, Lex Luger, you're our Hulk Hogan now. But now, if you go back to your all in the family classes, okay? For American mm-hmm. culture, at that period, doing anything like that is a disrespect to the flag. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But now everyone just dresses like the flag here in Oklahoma. It's freaking ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like, I, yeah, that's just what Bunny said. Like, yeah, I'm supposed to, like, take my hat off and salute this fat guy's ass now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. So then uh, the five-man comedy troupe, So You're a Man, splits up a bit. Taika starts acting and doing short films. In fact, he did a short film in 2004 called Two Cars One Night. It was up for an Oscar. Really nice. Yeah. He, okay. he, he hasn't even made his first full-length feature film. Already, he's up for an Oscar, so good for Taika. Mm-hmm. Yes, honey? <laughs> what did you lose it? What did you lose it with? When you said it was up for an Oscar. Yeah? <laughs> because I didn't hear that. What did you hear? I heard it was up for an Oscar, and I was like, what the fuck? 
fuck it is that? It was a Frenos? No, Frenos. It was a Frenos. And I was like, what the fuck is a Frenos? And well, then you're you not repeated a, it. And no. I, I just, this is the sh- this is the shit I hear, okay? Well, <laughs> you're not a big Supernatural fan like I am, so you probably haven't <laughs> learned about the Frenos, which are these demon warlocks. <laughs> Shut up! I tried. They're the I next... tried. And you just laughed in my face. You scoffed at me. I love they're the... you. They're the next step down from the active Thetans. Yeah, <laughs> the next step down from from the Thetans. Basically, they're <laughs> they're the not so active Thetans. They're they're the yeah. they're the Thetans. They're a little chubby, you know. Yeah, yeah. They don't get around they much. Themselves. They're really not causing any harm, really. <laughs> yeah. So, while Taika is trying to work on being a director and make movies and getting nominated for an Oscar, Fly to the Concords are touring the goddamn world. They're touring all around America. They're touring all around the world. They play in America. They're doing TV. They get, uh, they're on David Letterman. And, and this is something I learned about today. These are for the baby when they cool down, okay? Okay. I learned about this today. They were invited to the South by Southwest Music Festival. Nice. So so they're super young. They haven't done the TV show yet. They're trying to make it. And the South by Southwest Music Festival is a huge fucking deal for them. So what they do is they travel to Texas for the South by Southwest Music Music Festival. And they turn it into an hour-long documentary for New Zealand television. Nice. And it's on YouTube. It's called Fly to the Concords, A Texan Odyssey. And mm. don't watch it or anything. I watched like the first 10, 15 minutes of it. And then I stopped watching because I thought it might be good future homework because it really is an adorable special. And also, um, Brett has these ridiculous fucking chops. Like he's yeah. like he's like he's like the ninth president of the United States. They're <laughs> ridiculous. They are ridiculous fucking. They, they, they are chops. Yeah. And I've never seen him look like this. Ever, but he's got these fucking big ass tops. So um, it's a really good special. I stopped watching it at a specific point when they're at the South by Southwest Music Festival and they start going around uh, interviewing other bands and they find a Japanese punk rock band called the Emeralds. Okay. And I'm like, oh, holy shit, I gotta see if these guys are still around. So I go on YouTube and I search band the Emeralds. And I didn't find the Japanese punk rock band from this one year at South by Southwest. But I did discover that the Emeralds are a legendary Canadian polka band. <laughs> so I immediately sent their music to Emerald. Nice. And I'm like, Emerald, you're a legendary Canadian polka band. And she immediately texted me back with, I fucking hate you. <laughs> And I messaged, messaged her back, that's okay. I know you love me, so ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so, they, I, yeah, I got distracted with the band The Emeralds, but it looks like a really great documentary of, like, young Flight of the Concords before they got big. But anyway, in 2014, in, in, so... In, the Flight of the Concords, they're touring America, they're doing shows, they're getting big. HBO gives them a half-hour special, and apparently that did big. Uh, so in 2004, as Taika is getting Oscar nominations, Flight of the Concords start a BBC radio show mm-hmm. that was largely improvised and featured their uh, friend and New Zealand stand-up comedian, Reese Darby, as their manager. And literally, the story is... They're there and they're about to record and they're like, 60 seconds, guys. And Reese is like, guys, you haven't told me what this show is about. And the guys both go, oh, we have no idea. We just thought we could make it up. Well, who am I supposed to be? Oh, we don't know. We just thought, you know, you're really funny. So you could come up with something at the last second. Well, what am I supposed to be? You're a band. What am I supposed to be? Your band manager? Five seconds, guys. And literally, the episodes, the first episode starts with uh, Reese Darby just thinking off the top of his head of like, what the fuck? What are we supposed to? Three, two, one. Nice. All right, guys, band meeting. <laughs> band meeting, uh, Brett. So, so yeah, it, fucking Reese Darby. I love this man. Uh, 
Yeah. So, so these two different stories came together. HBO gave them a half hour special that was re- really successful, and they have an award winning BBC radio show. These two things came together and exploded. And in 2007, Fly the Concords had their two started their 2007 HBO show, which I fell in love with. The whole family fell in love with. When we were in California, we watched all of this so much over and over again. In fact, recently I realized that Maxwell has no fucking idea who Flight of the Concords are. So I went looking for our DVDs and found that they're just all there on fucking Amazon Prime. So we yeah. were watching it. Maxwell was so confused. He was so confused, but he, <laughs> there were some things that he liked. I he he was interested in the show when I told them, "Hey, the Flight of the Concords fan, that's the girl with the rabbit ears from Bob's Burgers." Oh. that was the part where he's like she's from bob's burgers i love bob's burgers and i'm like yeah close your eyes it's totally her she's the girl from bob's burgers Wait, so who? the fly of the concords one fan oh yeah. yeah she's she's the daughter from bob's burgers the one the one woman in bob's burgers who's actually a woman because everyone else is played by a guy <laughs> tina's played by a guy. The, the mom is played by a guy linda linda yeah so, so yeah, we've been watching. We've been watching a lot of the flight of the concourse. Uh, we all know Bowie. Eleanor really likes boom, boom. On the boom, man, my legs go boom. Yeah, it's like a reggae song. <laughs> so, so they did two seasons of Flight of the Concords, and then they left it at that. But FYI, just an FYI for everyone. In 2016, Jermaine and Brett did reunite for a massive North American tour. Nice. That that featured brand new music along with their classic music. So I don't think Flight of the Concords is dead. Good. Which is good. But but some solo uh, projects. You know, it's nice. Oh, so many solo projects. Uh, Brett and Jermaine went their separate ways. Brett won a fucking Oscar. Did he win an Oscar? For what? He won a fucking oscar because brett was like trying to be an actor and he maybe got one part here and one part there but that's about it and he's like i really want to be an actor but you know i'm also a musician maybe i can try and do music maybe someone will hire me to do some music and as it turns out uh disney decided to they're like you know what oh shit we own the muppets how long have we owned the muppets guys okay did you guys Oh, we the fucking Muppets? Maybe we should do something with them. Shit, we'll make another movie. We want the songs to be really funny, though. We need to look for someone who does music who's really funny. And poor Brett's there like, hey, I do music. So he wrote the music for the last two Muppet movies. He won Best Original Song for Am I a Man or Am I a Muppet? Yeah, that was up for Best Original Song, and it won. Brett won a wow. fucking Oscar. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it was Brett from Flight of the Concords. Yeah, it was kind of a Concordsian song. But my favorite was the song that was up for Best Song of the Year after that. No, it wasn't up for Best Song, and I was pissed off about it. He wrote a song for the second Muppet movie, Muppets Most Wanted, called uh, Anything You Want. I can get you anything you want. And literally, it basically is just a fucking Fly to the Concord song, but yeah. sung by an evil version of Kermit the Frog. Nice. It's a great fucking song, and I absolutely love it. And um, and then it's great because they hired Jermaine. Jermaine, I keep wanting to add an R, like a regular person named Jermaine, but it's Jermaine. Yeah. So... They hired Jermaine to be a bad guy in the second Muppet movie. You, you so know, it's Jermaine singing songs written by Brett. It was the closest thing to a Flight of the Concords reunion at that time. You do know why it's Jermaine, Jermaine though. Jermaine. Why? Jermaine. Dad stuttered. There you go. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. So Brett won a fucking Oscar. Besides that, he got married, he had two kids, and he acts here and there occasionally. He was in the movie Austin Land, which is not good and nobody saw, but still, he was that like... That was the Bruce was like, Dern movie, wasn't it? 
That was the movie. That was the movie where this girl who loves Jane Austen goes to a Jane oh. Austen theme park, <laughs> and there's all these Jane Austen characters, and it's it's kind of like a West World, but instead of robots that you can kill and fuck, it's Jane Austen books, and you can live in a Jane Austen world. And she falls in love with a guy because that's supposed to happen. But right. then afterwards, she goes to a bar and stuff and meets the actual actor that she's falling in love with during the day. Uh huh. And they meet and get to know each other. Yes, Maxwell. By two. But that's it. Okay. So, yeah, uh, Ger- uh, Brett hasn't been in a lot. But Jermaine. Jermaine has a weird looking face and an amazing voice. He is in 30% of everything. Really? He was in uh, Men in Black 3, Despicable Me, and Despicable Me 2. He was in Eagle vs. Shark. He was in Gentleman Broncos. He was in Rio and Rio 2. He was in Disney's Moana and Disney's uh, The BFG. He was in the Lego Batman movie. He's been in a ton of shit. He's been in a ton of shit, primarily voiceover work, because, again, he has a weird-ass voice. He does a really good bad guy. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, in the Lego Batman movie, he was, uh, what's his name, Sauron? Sauron, okay. Yeah, yeah, he was Which, Right, right. Cause, and I said that that made sense because he's New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. And then fucking uh, 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 the Riddler in the Lego Batman movie was uh, Conan O'Brien, and that's amazing. Uh, but yeah. anyway, because he never does stuff like that. Uh, so then in 2014, so then in 2006, he teamed up with his old friend, uh, Jermaine, Jermaine, teamed up with his old friend, his old humor beast buddy, Taika Waititi, to make <laughs> a an ad-libbed short film about vampires. And that was a big success. So in 2014, they decided to turn this short film into the hilarious mockumentary What We Do in the Shadows. Jermaine plays Vlad the Booker. Yes. And Taika plays Viago, the anal one, and basically the like star of the whole fucking film. Okay. Not, not anal like he likes to do it in the butt but anal retentive he's he's, yeah he is definitely house mother yeah yeah he's basically the star of the fucking film so that's that's interesting and then murray plays the alpha of the werewolves which i love um here's the crazy part jermaine and taika wrote a script it was 150 pages long and they didn't show it to anyone including the fucking crew nice because they wanted the film to entirely be ad-libbed and spontaneous and real that was the important thing that we wanted to get these characters who were playing characters but put them in real situations where they would act uh authentically yeah so much so so much so that the human who plays Stu. yes is the, the the greatest story about this film. <laughs> he was told, he was hired to work on computers on the set of the film. He was a <laughs> real business analyst named Stu Rutherford who was oh. tricked into being in the fucking film. Nice. He was, he was literally told that he was just going to be hired to work on computers on the set and to work on uh, websites and to work on uh, developing the film in a computer sense. And sure, you'll have a small part in the film, but that's it. <laughs> Instead, he became one of the major fucking characters in the film because they, they tricked him to being in the film because they wanted him to act honestly and naturally like he would as an actual guy who works with computers. Yes, yes, We're, and okay, and he was kind of tricked you. You're a major part in the film. You're going to be hanging out with these vampires. We're sorry that we tricked you, but we wanted you to act naturally. Okay, and go is basically <laughs> how he got to be in the fucking film. And he was so beautifully wooden. Yeah, and 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 a horrible, horrible actor. <laughs> you know, yeah. but when you got him in his little elements, like tell him what you do, Stu. 
fucking he's right yeah. there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, and and, and, but it makes sense that if you are a normal human and you are hanging out with a bunch of vampires, you're going to be kind of on your guard. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. So this guy was tricked into being in the film. And he became a major character in the movie. His end scene where he's being attacked by the werewolves was very emotional for the family. Yes. And the whole family was like, what? No, no, it's, <laughs> he, he's dead. He can't be dead. No. Not so they do. Yeah. So they filmed, because it was ad-libbed, they filmed over 120 hours of footage. <laughs> they filmed so much footage that there were three different cuts of the film. One cut of the film that focused solely on jokes, one cut of the film that focused solely on the plot, and one cut that was a combination of both of those, and that's what they went with. Yeah. Interesting fact about the movie that I didn't realize until recently, each vampire in the film is based on a famous vampire. I kind of I kind of got that. I'm not sure if I know who all, all they are. Obviously, yeah. Dracula, Vlad, Vlad the Impaler, and obviously Nosferatu. No, no, here's the, here's the interesting part. Vlad the Booker uh, uh, Jermaine specifically said that he based his entire part specifically on Gary Oldman yes. in Bram Stoker's Dracula. Mm. And that's important because he, he does play sort of like a look at me, I'm sexy sort of <laughs> Dracula. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter is, of course, Nosferatu. Yes. <clears throat> Viago, the uptight one, is supposed to be Louis from Interview with a Vampire. Okay, I could see it. Which may kind of like a modern day Louis from Interview with the Vampire, and that makes sense because the original tagline on the poster for the film was "Interviews with some vampires." <laughs> was the tagline? Deacon is supposed to be Bella Lugosi's Dracula. If it, I don't fully oh, no. see that, but if you, but if he does sound like he's going for a Bella. He does sound like, like he's going for a bell now that you say it. Yeah, but the look is way off. Yeah. Uh, Nick is supposed to represent Edward from Twilight. He's not trying to be Edward from Twilight because he's kind of being a dick, but he is the younger, cooler one. Yeah. So in that sense, you can see it. So for a while, the plan was a movie sequel. They were going to do a sequel Right after What We Do in the Shadows, it was going to be called What We Do in the Moonlight. Yeah. The alternate title, which I really like, um, the alternate title that they were going to go with is called We're Wolves. We're Wolves? We are Wolves. We are Wolves. wolves. Nice. Yeah. It was nice. going to follow the werewolves, which would have been cool. But instead... There's a whole different spinoff happening. It's 100% actually happening. They're working nice. on it now. Okay. They're working on it now. I'm excited. It's, it's a six-episode TV series for New Zealand's TV NZ2 network. The title is Paranormal Event Response Unit, and it's going to feature Mike and Karen, the two clueless cops who are really helpful with their safety tips. Oh. Let's kill them. No, let's see what other tips they have. <laughs> I will watch the shit out of that show because it's basically <laughs> we're surrounded by vampires and werewolves and zombies and witches and they're constantly fighting, and yet we're just two dumb, clueless cops. Yes. <laughs> and we don't even know what's going on. We're mm -hmm. just cops. Well, because they keep I hypnotizing you. Yeah. I love that fucking idea. They're working on the show now. I will watch the shit out of that. Yes. I'm in. Now. I'm in. Yeah. No, I totally am. I can't wait for that. Now... I'm not going to break down the plot. It's an improvised vampire comedy from New Zealand. It's hard to break down the intricacies of that goddamn plot. But I would be remiss if I didn't mention Thor and his roommate, Daryl. Thor and his roommate, Daryl. 
Have you seen the two Thor shorts? No. Okay, this is going to be wonderful. So Taika Watiti, whatever, he has been given the reins. The man who wrote, produced, directed, and starred in What We Do in the Shadows has been given the reins of the Marvel Cinematic Universe's Thor. Oh, my God. Okay. This is basically the same bizarre, odd, left-field choice that gave us Guardians of the Galaxy from the world of fucking trauma. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. And so, so, so people were like, wait a second, this is the Marvel Cinematic Universe, this is the third Thor movie, you're giving it to this guy? Okay, this is a bit odd and confusing, so is Thor just going to be a joke, we're all confused, what is this, this is going to be so bizarre, and Marvel said, don't worry, this is going to be fine, so what they did is they had Taika write, produce, and direct a series of shorts. There are two shorts. One came with some Marvel Blu-ray. The other one came with another Marvel Blu-ray. They literally are giving Taika free reign over Thor in movies. Really? So the two short films that he did for Marvel are called Team Thor, and it shows what Thor was up to during the Marvel Civil War. He said, well... You know, while everybody else was fighting each other, I decided I needed to have a little me time. <laughs> I really needed to figure myself out. So I moved here to Australia, mm-hmm. and I got a roommate, and it's just some loser named Daryl. <laughs> and he's an accountant, and he's suddenly sharing an apartment with a god. <laughs> and it's really great because... because uh, there are two videos and it brings humor to Thor and there hasn't been much humor to him. They yeah. humanize Thor. Like there's one scene where Daryl's working and suddenly like, and it's fucking Thor coming, <laughs> visiting him at work. It's like, yes, Daryl has been helping me with electronic messages. I'm trying to get in touch with the other guys, see if they need me. And he's there dictating messages to all the other Marvel characters. Dear Captain America, What's up? Do you remember that one time where we had a bad guy locked in prison and I goaded you into killing him and you promised (laughs) me never to tell anyone about it? Well, I'm here if you need me for your little war. (laughs) And he's all upset that, like, no one is asking him for help during the Civil War. Nice. Nice. So so, So I really liked watching Civil War, and I'm pretty sure I yelled this in the theater. I, I don't think I yelled it, but I said it loudly. There's the scene where they're being visited by General Thunderbolt Ross in the Civil War in the Civil War movie. Yeah. And, and uh, General Ross says to Iron Man, "Can you tell me where exact certainty where Thor and Banner are right now?" And there's like a silence because Iron Man doesn't know. And I'm like, "Come on, they're in Australia with Daryl. <laughs> we all know this." They humanized Thor and they make him more into a, a more realistic character, and that really makes me excited to see like Taika's Thor movie at the end of the year because that's going to be fucking amazing. Essentially, it's going to be like Guardians of the Galaxy all over again, and so I'm really fucking excited. Is this Thor Ragnarok? Thor Ragnarok was written by the same fucking guy who wrote What We Do in the Shadows. Nice. That's why Thor Ragnarok looks so different and weird and odd and and bizarre and it's in space yeah. and they're suddenly meeting up with fucking Doctor Strange for some reason <laughs> and and Marvel keeps uh, calling it a buddy road trip comedy nice. except with and Hulk and it's like and everyone's like wait a second how is that even possible but no this is fucking this is fucking Taika. He's coming up with that. They they recently released the second Team Thor short, and it's really adorable because uh, uh, Daryl, Thor's roommate, is like, you know, it'd be really nice if if you could chip in for rent because you, you haven't paid me once since you've been living here. And he's like, hey, you want me to pay you? Here. And he starts throwing this shit on the table. What is this thing? These are worth millions <laughs> in Asgard. These are Asgardian coins. Look, each one is a billion dollars. Look, you're a billionaire. Look, you're a billionaire again. Look, you're a billionaire. You know this goblet? 
this goblet was forged in the fires, and it's like, okay, but this isn't worth money. What am I supposed to do with this, Thor? Well, you, 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 you go to the supermarket. You put up a stand as guardian treasures. <laughs> you sell them for a million dollars each. You'll be a millionaire. We need a butler. It's, like, <laughs> it's settled. We're getting a butler. And he's like, he's writing. Thor is writing a, he's writing a segue through the living room. <laughs> it's great because Thor is an asshole in there. But are, that's the are these on YouTube thing. at all? Do you know? Um, the first one is in its entirety on YouTube. The second one is kind of harder to find. Yeah, but it's but it's still really good. There are clips of the second one on YouTube, but in order to find the the full second one, you have to like like Bing video it and try and track it down, and you go to some foreign website with a bunch of pop ups. But it does exist online. They're both. Really great. There's one specific part in the first Team Thor short where he's like having a Thor is having a beer with Bruce Banner, and they're both pissed that no one has called them. <laughs> so when they announced Thor Ragnarok, the first thing that I thought was, "Wouldn't it be great if Daryl was in this?" <laughs> yeah, wouldn't it be great if it's like Daryl makes an appearance. So the Marvel uh, team had to specifically come out and make an announcement. We are sorry to inform the fans out there, but Daryl is not appearing in Thor Ragnarok. However, <laughs> we have not ruled out having Daryl make an appearance in Avengers Infinity Wars. Oh, man. And that's fucking awesome. I can imagine like uh, Thor going off to fight uh, uh, Thanos and going. So Daryl, I'm gonna be away for a while. Sorry about that. Uh, if you could just do my ditches for the next, I don't know, month. Yeah, that would be great. It really is wonderful. They're they're wonderful things to track down. But I'm so excited for Thor Ragnarok. It's the one movie this year that I'm excited about more than anything else. Because the man who made what we do in the shadows wrote the next Thor movie. And this is just <laughs> going to be so weird and stupid. And that's why it has that great line. That's why I'm so, ex you know, that uh, um, where Thor is being sent to battle and Hulk yeah. shows up. He's like, yes! <laughs> and everyone's, we know each other. We're friends from work. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah, that's, fuck that's fucking Taika. That that makes sense. I'm so excited! Yeah, that makes a lot yeah, yes, of sense. Maxwell. Uh, hold on a second. Yes, Maxwell. Yes, I will put the TV up just a little bit, okay? But I'm trying really hard not to have annoying orange pop up in the back of one of our episodes. You don't understand copyright infringement, but I do. So just trust me on this, okay? So, what we do in the shadows, it's a great fucking movie. It has some great lines. For the past, like, three days, I've been telling the family, maybe we should get some slaves. <laughs> That's a great line. I love the, uh, um, leave me alone to do my dark bidding on the internet. Yes. What are you bidding on? I'm bidding on a table. <laughs> And I had a huge argument with Maxwell today. I had a huge argument with Maxwell. Yeah. Because Maxwell's like, Daddy, can you make me lunch? Yeah, what do we, what do you want for lunch? I can make you a PB and J. I can make you some mac and cheese. We, I can warm up some of this chicken. Uh, we've got these noodles here. We've got spaghetti and meatballs. Daddy, I want spaghetti and meatballs. No, you do not. You think you do, but you do not. I've been trying to get you to eat spaghetti and meatballs. For your entire life, you are the only kid in existence that doesn't like Chef Boyardee spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> you will say you want to eat it. You will eat one or two bites and then you'll give up. I know you, Maxwell. You do not want this. He's like, but I promise I'll eat all of it. Please, Dad, please. But I gave him the spaghetti and meatballs. He didn't eat it at all. And we got into an argument. But I, I, I kept thinking the whole time, so Maxwell... <laughs> Do you like this? 
Pischetti. Yes. And of course, let's all remember, we're werewolves, not, not swear werewolves. There are too many good parts in this movie. It's just one of those oh, yeah. movies. Top to bottom, oh, yeah. it's just it's just hysterical. Yeah, it's all good. The beast. Great. The <laughs> yeah, beast. the beast. How he fought the beast. You tell us on yeah. the hills of the Alps how he fought the beast. And then yeah. the beast is just his fucking ex-girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> but I love the scene with the beast and Stu. It's like, tell them what you do, Stu. I'm a computer analyst for... And then the beast is immediately... Virgin! He's a virgin! He's a virgin! Yes. <laughs> He's gotta be a virgin! Love that. And just seeing this movie just makes me so excited as hell for the new Thor. Get excited for the new Thor, people! Get excited for the new Thor, yes. Like, oh my god, it's the exact same excitement that I got when they're like, wait a second, Marvel gave uh, a, a whole series of characters to the guy who made Sliver? Yeah. Uh-huh. What the hell? They gave, they gave a Marvel movie to the guy who wrote Tromeo and Juliet? What the hell were they thinking? And then it was an amazing fucking movie. It's the exact same thing as this. The guy who wrote What We Do in the Shadows, Marvel said, you can make a $100 million superhero movie. <laughs> so get excited. Everyone needs to be excited. Everyone's at like a four. You need to be at like an eight with me. Yeah. Super excited for this year's Thor movie, everybody. Yes. Everybody. Hey, the trailer looks good. Yeah. Um, Best trailer I've seen in a while. And I've been feeling yeah. kind of let down with the Marvel movies a bit. I, uh, Civil War, yeah, okay. I don't know, I it, just didn't, it just didn't kill me. And of course, Age I of Ultron. I really love Civil War. Doctor Strange was uh, okay. Yeah. But, but that's it. That's all I've got for this week. It, it, what we do in the shadows it's a great ass film it's on amazon prime watch it it's less than an hour and a half long for shit's sake it's a great fucking movie yes <laughs>